Hi, I've been uh, doing load workups for 6.5 Creedmoor, and I'm paying a lot of attention to the brass. I'm trying to get the most, uh, concentricity is uh, pretty much where I've been putting most of my efforts. So if I shoot uh, loads that are two thousandths or less in concentricity, I think that's pretty good. So I have a bunch of brass that uh, has not been neck sized, and I, I haven't been full length sizing the brass. I've been neck sizing the brass. The last group, I neck sized the 290. This group, I think I'm going to uh, tighten it down a little bit to the 289. I was watching 6.5 guys, and they were talking about they were using this Sinclair mandrel. Uh, the Sinclair mandrel neck sizes by the ID. So in other words, you've got a mandrel here, and it's this is 262, which is 2,000 under the 6.5 caliber. What this will do is it. Now this has been shot. It's a one shot brass, so the neck has been blown out to the chamber size, and you can see that the 262 mandrel fits right into it. So what I have here, this is forest forest neck bushing die, and I've got the 289 bushing on it. So what we're going to do, put a little bit of lube up here on the neck of the case. And I kind of, I don't know if this is necessary, but I go in a little bit. And then I come in the second time. I rotate the case a little bit, and then I come in the second time. What I have here is I adapted... On the Forrester Press, I adapted a snap-on torque wrench. I made a little adapter that fits right here. And then the snap-on torque wrench uh, attaches to the adapter. And what this does is every time I come down, I get the breakaway on the uh, torque wrench. And so each case I'm hitting with the exact same force. Because, you know, once you hit the breakaway, that's the most push you put on it. So now we're going to clean this thing off, clean out the inside here. We're going to take this 262 mandrel, and it goes right in. Fits right inside that neck. So obviously I wouldn't use... That would give me 2,000s press on the bullet. So now we're going to check it for concentricity. I don't know if you can see the indicator on this thing. Between numbers is 1,000s. So this is one and a half thousandths concentricity. Each one of those marks on that thing is small. I don't know. Fifty millionths. Each large mark, larger mark, I should say, is one ten thousandths. So this has been sized to 289 on the OD and the neck. 262 mandrel fits inside of it. Let me grab, I got a 263 mandrel. So this is a 263 mandrel. It also fits inside of it. If we run this thing inside the 289 again, this is a 263. Right into it. So this is interesting. I guess if the diameters of the neck vary. So this is, let's take a bullet. Got a bullet here somewhere. Now, a bullet doesn't go in. Actually, a bullet is nice, nice and snug in that thing. Okay, so I think we're going to set this one off to the side. Let's grab another one and see what happens. Put a little lube on it. Come back inside the, uh, got the Forrester neck sizing die. Come down a little bit on it. We're going to rotate it. I'm just trying to get this as concentric as possible. I would like the necks to be pretty consistent. I'm going to clean that off. Clean off the inside. 262 goes right in. 263 does not. So I think what we're talking about here, or what we're looking at, is if the neck thickness varies, when I size the OD of it, I'm going to get inconsistencies in my neck tension. See what kind of uh, concentricity we got. This thing here is under a half thousandths total indicated run out. So this case is like really good. Let's check all these other ones that I had done just to make sure. The 262, 262, 262, 262, 262. Negative on the 263. Negative on the 263. Oh. 
That one, 263. 263, 263, negative on the 263. Do another one. So it looks like variations in the neck thickness, the material there, are going to affect tension on the bullet, case neck tension. So if you're looking for the most consistent in neck tension, you might be better off sizing down to like a 288 or 287. I'll tell you right now, 263 is going to go on this, yeah. And then resizing up with whatever neck tension you want. This is a 262, and that's a 263. And I think you would probably get more consistent, again, this thing here. It's less than a thousandth. A little bit bigger on the neck. I don't know if this rotation is really necessary. Again, 263, I can feel it. Oh, this is right at the 263. About one and three quarters of a thousandth, but still very good. This is even better. This 262 will not fit this now. So this is a one-shot Hornady brass. This stuff was um, uh, factory ammunition. And what we did is uniformed all the primer pockets, deburred the, the flash holes on both inside and out, cleaned up the case necks, uh, deburred the case necks, and now we're neck sizing it. And right here you can see the 262 will not go in. So we're going to set this one over here. And we'll probably run that 262 mandrel in it. Ideal situation would have been to have the 262 fit into it and a 263 knot. That would have been the best situation. Then I would have known that all my neck tension would have been relatively close. My concentricity would have been good. Just over a half a thousand. And 262 does not go in. So these two are smaller than 262. So we're going to take the 262 mandrel. Drop that in. Set this thing in. For this dye, they use a, it's like a graphite powder. And a graphite powder is mixed in with, um, I don't know what this stuff is. Just take this stuff and just load it right up. It doesn't affect the powder at all. So whatever is in this graphite. The cap on this thing. So what what this stuff is, is there's like a media, I don't know, they're like little tiny plastic balls. And then you take 5 to 10 grams, uh, I'm sorry, 5 to 10 uh, grains graphite powder and dump it into it and shake it. Very messy stuff. So that's a tight fit. Even though the mandrel has been forced through it, it's tight on the 262. So I guess the bottom line of this whole video is that neck tension... I think you're probably better off, if you're looking for consistent neck tension, using a mandrel like this, shrinking the necks down to, in this case, maybe a 288. That's a 289 bushing inside the Forester. So maybe have a 288. Let's see if we've got a 288. Okay, we have a 288 for the Forester. Take the 289 out of it, put the 288 into it. We'll wipe out as long as we're in here and clean out some of the gunk on this die. On this okay, here's a 288. We'll drop that in there. The way you do this, they want that, they want that to float. So I put a little mark on the end. I come down, I tighten it, I loosen it up a quarter turn. I note the split ring, lock ring, quarter turn. And what they want is they want that neck sizer bushing to float in there. Okay, so this is 289. We're going to call these, we're going to mix these in with the uh, 262. A lot of numbers going around here. All right, so this size with a 289 and the 263 mandrel fits into it. So let's run some lube on it. This is the 288. Yep, well, this might be what we want. And let's take the 262. All right, so the 263 mandrel did not fit it. This might be the way to go here. I can get them all the same by running the necks in the 288 and then running this 262 mandrel on all of them. What I'm basically what I'm doing is I'm shrinking the necks down small enough so that I can size them using this neck sizer. So as long as I remain concentricity, let's see what happens. We'll do a complete job on this one. Tell you what, let's do like three or four of them. 
Now this is Hornady brass. I was told by one of the guys that kind of got me started on this. He said buy Lapool brass. But I had these rounds, so you know, this is the live ammo that I had bought. I did not want to just discard the cases. So his his point was that if you buy good brass, you're not going to have these kind of issues. And even though you, you know, would think Hornady should be pretty good, obviously I saw a lot of inconsistencies in the uh, primer pockets. We're seeing inconsistencies in the next yeah. All right, so now we got four cases here. We're going to size all of these up, but I think you're getting the idea. In this case with the Hornady brass, because of the variations in the thickness of the brass at the neck, sometimes a 263 mandrel will fit it, sometimes it'll fit a 262, sometimes a 262 will be tight. They were all run through the 289 Forster neck bushing. But because of those inconsistencies, uh, neck tension can be all over the place. The best way to do it is bring the neck down smaller than whatever size you want to use. And in this case with the 262, I'll have two thousands compression on the bullet, then open it up with the 262. This way all my necks will be consistent. The tension will be consistent. And provided I OD indicate for total indicated run out on the OD, uh, OD the case, which is how it's going to, the case is what's going to hold it in the chamber. And then you, so bottom line, what we're trying to tell you is that uh, neck turning might be the biggest thing that you can do to affect your grip size. You can see the inconsistencies in the neck thickness can affect tension on the bullet. So that's what we're trying to show you in this video. All right, thanks for watching.